Hello, everyone. Hi, how do you do? Well, here we are, back on the Bible Study Podcast. Yes, we are. And life is good, and God is great. Yes, He is. And, and the weather is beautiful. Oh, isn't it? Let's see, it's supposed to be a little warm today. But by the time this views... It'll be nice. Yeah, well, be, we're going to get some little rain coming in from that storm that's coming out of the Gulf. But, yeah. But uh, My yard needs it, so I hope, yeah. I hope it does rain. So yeah. I like that. Yeah. Well, okay, we... Uh, looked at Saul's first major act or victory. Victory against the Ammonites. Or solidifying the kingship of uh, Israel. And today we come to the final address of a great prophet. Yes. Uh, 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 He is uh, considered by most to be the last of the judges because he led the people before the kingship. Mm -hmm. And uh, this technically closes out the period of the judges. It's his farewell address as a judge. He'll still function as a prophet and irritate Saul for the rest of his life. But uh, (laughs) but, uh, he'll... uh, his, his role as leader of the people is, is over. So Okay. And this is a great chapter, though. If you if you want a concise history of how God's been working in, in the Old yeah. Testament or Israel, yeah. Yeah. good chapter. This is it. That. Yeah. Uh, and before we get started, okay. uh, la- last week we talked about uh, Saul defeating the Ammonites, and then when it was over with, uh, uh, Samuel said to the said to the people let's go to Gilgal right. and we couldn't remember what Gilgal the significance yeah. of Gilgal I had a senior moment I could I couldn't pull it out but Gilgal is uh, when the Joshua and the people crossed the Jordan River mm-hmm. to come into the promised land they built a built a uh, a worship place of 12 standing stones to right. commemorate the the Jordan, the Jordan River having parted for right. them, mm-hmm. and that's the first place they camped out, okay. and that's the first, and that's where uh, Joshua had all the men circumcised that had been born in the wilderness. So right. it's, it's it's significant. It, right. It's that's the beginning of the Jewish conquest of the Promised Land. So okay, so Samuel is taking them back to the beginning. Right there's a uh, right Samuel has a has has a has a course that he goes with where prophets are stationed and Gilgal must be significant and he's taking them back to the beginning yeah he's, okay. he goes, so he's going to remind them of things and and we'll we'll, we'll, we'll study it okay. uh, we'll, we'll work our way there we'll, we'll, we'll work our way through it okay let's pray and we'll get started okay. father thank you for the power and the majesty of your word and thank you for the opportunity that you afford us to come together just to talk just to share the word of god among ourselves and with those who would choose to listen in watch in we're grateful for this opportunity in christ's name we ask it amen amen okay well then here we go so samuel addressed all of israel i have done as you asked and given you a king yeah and uh at this moment, they're pleased with him. Right. He just won a great big battle. He just won a big battle. Yeah. Okay. Going good. It's interesting. He says, you asked and I gave. Yeah. I'm sure Samuel's going to include God somewhere in this oh, process. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Here we go. Your king is now your leader. I stand here before you, an old gray-haired man, and my sons serve you. I have served as your leader from the time I was a boy to this very day. Yeah, been a long time. Yeah, he's been their he's been their leader, and he's been faithful, and he's been stood in the gap, and honest, and mm-hmm. and uh, as we'll see, he's he's uh, he's trying to make he, he's trying to contrast himself to a king, right? Yeah, and you can see that he's accepted this new way of doing things. Yeah. And yet, you can feel the the heart strings yeah. Uh, yeah. that he feels for these people. Yeah, he's been a good he's been a good yeah. prophet. And uh, I don't know how you I don't know if he feels it, but there must be a certain measure of of uh, that feeling that the people were disappointed in his leadership because they wanted the king. Right. You know. Right. It, yeah. it has to be in there somewhere right absolutely that's just normal yeah Yeah. all right now testify against me good point that you're making 
in the presence of the Lord and before his anointed one. Whose ox or donkey have I stolen? Have I ever cheated any of you? Have I ever oppressed you? Have I ever taken a bribe and perverted justice? Tell me, and I will make it right, whatever I have done wrong. Yeah, you're defending his uh, tenure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, in a way, he's contrasting himself to kings because he's told them, he's warned them that the kings are going to take their donkeys and their, and their livestock and right. going to tax them. And, yeah. and, and I didn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> so he's, he's really saying, you're about to see a difference. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, you know, probably the people got to the place of, of taking him for granted. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Wow. Okay. Verse 4. No, they replied, you have never cheated or oppressed us, and you have never taken even a single bribe. Yeah. Wow. He's been a, he's been a good leader. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The Lord and his anointed one are my witnesses today, Samuel declared, that my hands are clean. Yes, he is a witness, they replied. I do think he, he wants it almost like, you know, make sure this gets in the minutes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, I don't want anybody coming back later. Uh, and we have a way, don't we, uh, particularly in this day and time, of rewriting history and, and just oh. saying whatever we want to say. Anytime anything goes wrong, it was the previous guy's fault. That's what okay. I <laughs> A long time now. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. All right. But his hands are clean. He's yeah. done the honest thing. Yeah. All right. It was the Lord who appointed Moses and Aaron, Samuel continued. And this is where he starts the history. Go, this go, is go. Such a, reviewing the history, yeah, yes. It just, it just flows so well. He brought your ancestors out of the land of Egypt. Yeah, and we know that story, and that mm-hmm. and that story is connected to the location where he's at at, Gil, at Gilgal. So right. he's uh, he just he's he's setting them up for the but. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I like what he says here. Now stand here quietly before the Lord, as I remind you of all the great things the Lord has done for you and your ancestors. Yeah. Let me talk. Yeah. <laughs> You've had your. Son. It's my turn. Yeah. Right. Okay. When the Israelites were in Egypt and cried out to the Lord, he sent Moses and Aaron to rescue them from Egypt and to bring them into this land. So God's been working. Yeah. But the people soon forgot about the Lord their God. So he handed them over to Sisera, Sisera, the commander of Hazor's army, and also to the Philistines and to the king of Moab who fought against them. Yeah. So that's all the history of the judges, basically that period when they right. they, they they repented and went to the Lord, and He took care of them, and they did bad, and then they repented. And, you know, this 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 cycle, oh, of, yeah, uh, which uh, uh, in a way uh, resembles, if you think about it, uh, the the life of a Christian who's not fully committed and into. Yeah. You know, not fully sanctified to use our terminology. They they, they, they have up up and down, up and down, up and down, yeah. and uh, they 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 mess up and they go to the Lord and he he takes care and they mess up and that they you know yeah. that's yeah. kind of that uh, cycle that Christians go through as they grow, mm-hmm. and it can be painful, right. and it can be confusing too because uh, on the one hand think of yourself as a Christian but on the other hand you're not living that way and it's right. it's just a, a cycle people go through yeah and I, I think there's also I try to I be, try to be a little more simplistic mm-hmm. in my faith as I get older and I think there's something to this phrase right here the people soon forgot the Lord you can you can tackle life with the Lord or you can tackle life without the Lord and I'm just here to tell you you're right. It's going to be this up down yeah. relationship. Yeah. So you know, I'm always trying to encourage people. Don't forget God. Keep Him in it. You may not understand it. It may not make sense, but it will work out in the end. Well, in in, in my life, um, uh, I, I think back on. I've, I've been a Christian for 65 years now. And I think back on my life as a Christian and the times I've forgotten about God 
are the times when there's not a problem when I'm successful when it's, right. it, it's 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 you're, the good times mm-hmm. yeah it's the good times that right. uh, breed contempt if you will that, right. that mm-hmm. where you feel, and then then you hit a bad streak and so that's a good explanation of why there are troubles in Christians lives because if there weren't we wouldn't feel the need to right you know yeah I think it's just life in general yeah you're gonna you're gonna go up against you know, we were just talking about some lovely people in the life of our church going through a tough time. Yeah. And I go through a tough time because of a lack of faith or anything. That's just life. Yeah. And yet, we have a tendency to think that if something is bad happening to some good people, that something has God has turned against them. Or, oh, no, yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, I, I yeah. think of the story of Jesus uh, healing the man born blind and the disciples ask him, who sinned, him or his parents? Right. You know, mm-hmm. And Jesus says, well, it's not about that. It's about, you know. Yeah, yeah. He is what he is. <laughs> yeah. So that God can do something great yeah. in his life today. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got some, well, not better. I better not try to be a parent on on, on TV. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Or recording. Okay. Verse 10 says, Then they cried out to the Lord again, Confess, we've sinned by turning away from the Lord and worshiping the images of Baal and Ashtoreth. But we will worship you and you alone if you will rescue us from our enemies. Yeah. Yeah, Conditional. Conditional. We'll serve you if. Yeah. That reminds me of Jacob when he is at uh, Bethel, and he's, he, you know, he, he's scared of how things are going to go with his life. But he says, "God, if you'll watch over me, protect me, bless me, even bring me back here safe and alive, yeah. with a great big family, I'll give you a tithe." <laughs> you know, this—that's one of the things that has come to trouble me a little bit uh, in in the life of the church. Uh, as we do church Mm -hmm. and that is people bring their needs to the altar God do this for me God I want you but if you want to just worship or praise the altar's empty right I mean mean, you know what I'm saying exactly what Uh, you're saying people are there because they want something right uh, right. And uh, there, there's something narcissistic about that. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm sure God feels that way. Yeah, so. yeah. We should want to because uh, our love, yeah. adoration, and what worship does deliver something back to you. Yeah. So, so you, you're going to get something even if you do. Just that's why I like. I, I really do. Um, you know. I, we pray for 30 minutes on, on Wednesday night. Well, mm-hmm. it's, it's probably hard for me to, to just run a continual prayer in my mind for yeah. 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. But to pray for a moment and just sit there with the Bible, and then as I'm studying, th- then something comes to my mind, and go back, come back, sit down, go back. Yeah. And it's just a... the But sometimes I just enjoy the quietness yeah. of the moment. Well, yes. you... you uh, you remember the character uh, in Fiddler on the Roof, Tevia? No, I, I never, never. You never saw into Fiddler on the Roof. I, I wasn't a Fiddler on the Roof fan, so oh, I, yeah. Yeah, you, you got to watch that movie. You yeah. got to see the relationship Tevia has has with God because he's kind of in constant dialogue with God. Mm-hmm. You know, he's God. What about this? You know, God. You know, right. uh, you know, uh, and that's kind of the pattern of my life. I'm kind of these moment prayers all the time you know right. yeah I'm kind of in yeah. a constant dialogue with oh, you know? absolutely yeah and uh, it, it's really he makes it's really funny when he does it you know it's, right it's uh, but uh, uh, I, I like that that idea Paul talks about praying constantly praying always that's and right. I think I think that's what he's talking about always, always being in always being in the presence of God yeah to just you know, again, to to sit out a, a major portion of time, and I mean, we we are a society of fast moving, quick communication. Yeah, <laughs> and God, God can handle that. Yeah, cinema text. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Then the Lord sent, as you say, they're really re- recalling the history of the judges because He sent for Gideon. I don't know who Bedon was, Jephthah, and Samuel to save you. And you lived in safety. Yeah. So God did send rescuers. Yeah, absolutely. 
But when you were afraid of Nahash, the previous chapter, yeah. the king of Ammon, you came to me and said that you wanted a king to reign over you, even though the Lord your God was already your king. All right, here's the king that you have chosen. You asked for him, and the Lord has granted your request. So here he is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. does that mean be careful what you ask for sometimes? <laughs> I think it does. <laughs> it uh, does too. Uh, it also... Uh, it also speaks to be appreciative of what you have. Yeah. A lot of times we don't appreciate what we have until it's too late. Yeah. There have been times in my, in particularly more in my earlier ministry, when I wanted to uh, do some things, and, and I, I did get a chance to do some of those things. Mm -hmm. But one particular thing that doesn't really need to be clarified, but when I got the, the responsibilities or, or the position of it I was going I really don't like this yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't wait to turn it back over to someone else to do yeah. and stuff because sometimes I think we're just looking for the the glory of the whatever and not the the satisfaction yeah of it. yeah well I, I think that's a that is an affliction of uh, young pastors in particular you said no, are I'm people who, <laughs> right after people get ordained mm -hmm. there there is this d desire to establish themselves as somebody right. you know, to to confirm what just happened right you know right. and uh, uh, they tend to get rather uh, aggressive in their <laughs> you know, it's just. Uh, uh, I think it's a that's a human that's a human frailty. You know, right. uh, one thing that's interesting. I look at this. You ask for him. You know, God is a fulfilling God. He'll yeah. give, he, he he just might give you what you want. Yeah. But then when you get it, you may not be happy with it. Yeah. And then you wonder why God says no sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I had a unique relationship with my dad. I don't know if Jeffrey and Greg always ask for something, but if I ever ask my dad for something, he'd go, yes, because you never ask for anything. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's what's happening here. No. But it's like, you know, God really is a, he wants to give us the good things. Yeah. And sometimes he'll even give us the things we think are going to be good to show us that what we wanted was not as good. Yeah, God. I think uh, I think from God's perspective here, and, and it's risky to try to psychoanalyze God, oh, but yeah, uh, true. but from <laughs> but, but from God's perspective, I think He sees a teaching moment coming. Yes, <laughs> yes, I, yeah, I, and I think maybe Samuel has the same yeah. mindset. Okay. Now, if you fear and worship the Lord and listen to his voice, and if you do not rebel against the Lord's commands, then both you and your king will show you, will show that you recognize the Lord as your God. Yeah. Don't forget God. Just because you got a king, yeah. don't forget God because he's your real leader. Now, this is interesting, too. What I'm picking up here is the responsibility of the people to make the king successful. Yeah. Yeah. If they do what they're supposed to do, then you're going to be, and your king will show that you recognize the Lord your yeah. God. Uh, really, it is congregations make or break pastors all the oh, time. Oh, yeah. And uh, I've been very fortunate, of course, to be a one that I think has been very loving and kind. Not to say that they've always agreed. <laughs> or, well, you need, a, you, you need a certain, a certain, to be honest with you, uh, one of the problems as a small church pastor, which I was for all those years, is that uh, uh, there's very little wiggle room in the crowd. I mean, right. if you've got if you got a hundred people and you got a couple of bad apples, right, they kind of get lost in the crowd, you right. know, and you can deal with them. Right. But if you've got thirty people and you got one or two bad apples, they can wreak havoc. They sure can. And. Uh, yep. uh, that's why a lot of small churches are small churches to begin with. I right. mean, you it's know, it's hard to break out of that cycle. Hard to break out of that cycle, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the people, the people in the pews is what makes a great church. It really is. Yeah, uh, I come from a, a great church, Dublin, and I, what comes to my mind every time I think about Dublin and what's made it great is not the pastors that they had; it's the laymen. Yeah, that they've had exactly. Yeah, laymen make good. Good churches. Yeah. Yeah. 
Even let us preach it to you something sometimes. Yeah. Huh. Okay, but here you go. Yeah. If you rebel against the Lord's commands and refuse to listen to him, then his hand will be as heavy upon you as it was upon your ancestors. Yeah. And again, you know, I'm, I'm picturing God. He is almost like a, a, a good parent. I mean, he, he wants to give us things, but if we get out of hand, then the, the heavy hand comes down. Yeah. Which is not him being not liking us, but it's him correcting us, making sure we stay on the right you path. You said something in a sermon several weeks ago that that really was an aha moment for me. Oh, man. Yeah. And that is sinners experience God's love as God's wrath. Right. Like like teenagers erring, you know. Yes. That... that that was a perf- that was an insight that I had that had never dawned on me the way the way that you wow. phrased that. Well, yeah, I'm glad we did this Bible study. Today. <laughs> Thank you. But that's a that's a well, that's a that's a, that's a, wow. a good way of putting it. You know, because wow. God loves sinners, <laughs> but they experience it as wrath. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, I knew that, but I, it had never been related to me in that way, like a father of teenagers. You know, right? Because right. yeah. And some things you can only get a perspective of just being that parent. Yeah. Yeah, again, I love being a dad. I love being a pastor. And love being a husband. <laughs> but dad, oh, that's and grandfather. Oh, mm-hmm. man, granddaddy. I, I'm called granddaddy. I haven't had the privilege yet. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Well, you, you never know. <laughs> yeah. But I'm getting kind of old okay, here, you but, know. Uh, but hey, adopt you one of them little ones running out yeah. here, and, and it, I, I couldn't even get out of church Sunday morning. Uh, uh, one of our family's granddaughters was here, and she was so sweet. She Aww. was just wanting to talk to me, and so I just had to just you know get down and talk to her for a moment, yeah. and uh, it was great. Yeah. You know, I was, yeah, I love being a grandparent. All right, verse sixteen says, "Now stand here and see the great thing that the Lord is about to do." You know that it does not rain. Now this is a, this yeah. is great stuff here to me. Yeah. You know that it does not rain at this time of the year during the wheat harvest. But I will ask the Lord to send thunder and rain today, so that you can realize how wicked you have been in asking the Lord for a king. Yeah, this is a oh my goodness. This is a finger in your face. You know wow. you you know yeah. Uh, but look at the cur- the courage of Samuel. Yeah, I mean yeah. that'd be like. You know, I know there's supposed to be a hurricane coming. Maybe I should, should challenge the congregation if it rains yeah. this week. But yeah. really, he's good. This is like Elijah and the yeah. prophets of Baal calling oh, yeah. down the fire of God. Samuel's exactly. going. Samuel's going to call down a, a thunderstorm. Yeah. To uh, demonstrate to them uh, God's displeasure of what they're doing. And you know what? Now that I think of it, this is probably what Elijah was thinking about. Yeah. When he put that challenge forth. Yeah. But that takes a real guts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because if you miss it, mm, yeah. yeah. Well, you've got to know. You've got to. Yeah. You've got to have. A, you've got to have a conviction from God that yeah. it, it, here it comes. Use it well, yeah. wisely. And it's the reflection of a long relationship, that and a deep relationship that Samuel had with God right. to get to exactly. this point and make that kind of challenge. Absolutely. Okay. So it's got to rain. To prove that the people were wrong and asking for a king. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so Samuel called to the Lord, and the Lord sent thunder and rain that day. And of course, all the people were terrified of the Lord and of Samuel. Yeah. Wow. That is amazing to me. Is, um, yeah. You're standing there. It hadn't been rain for weeks. It's just a sunny, no, nothing in the sky. And the man of God says, "Okay, I got to prove to you today that I'm telling you the truth." So it's going to rain in just a few moments. <laughs> there it comes. Yeah, and wow. uh, yeah, that's uh, you have to have a special relationship with God to be able to mm-hmm. know that your prayers are going to be answered in that way. Yeah. You know, and your <clears throat> motives have to be pure. And right. you know, uh, right. there's a, there's only been a couple times in my life where I where I where I prayed. And feel feel like there was this immediate answer. Right. It, it, you know what that right. it it, uh, um, it uh, 
and it gives you a good feeling, but uh, 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 you really have to know for sure. You really right. have to have be tied with God. You right. Know. right. There is something <clears throat> on our recent trip to the West, when you go in those different forests, particularly where the sequoia trees are, um, <clears throat> those trees are created in a certain way to sustain life through the worst of possible conditions. Mm -hmm. And one of the interesting things <clears throat> uh, that God told us was the trees are, are, <clears throat> are so high up um, you know, we may we get big news all the time about the forest fires going on out there. Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to have fires have been burning since the beginning of creation. Yeah. So these trees are created so that the fire can only go up so high, and the tree has a uh, almost ha has this adapted itself to these fires so that the fires it can burn around the bottom, and that's okay because it can't go so I can go so uh, high up because mm -hmm. there's not a, any branches to latch on to because gotcha. they're way up here well there was this one tree where there are these uh, leaves growing out and it, and they're prickly and the reason that they're prickly but they're really nice up high is because the tree doesn't like the deers eating them ah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't, don't tell me smart how trees <laughs> smart trees yeah well the same thing as I'm alluding to is that in the in the Holy Land, weather is easily a, a, a comprehension of, of being in a good relationship with God or a bad relationship. Yeah. The land is alive. Yeah. God knows that the land needs rain to produce the crops. So when the when everything dries up, the people should be going, Oh, wait a minute, something's wrong in our relationship yeah. with God. But they don't do that. They think it's just the weather. It, it, we, when, I, when I went out to Sequoia, they they were talking about the fires, forest fires, and they were they were, they were talking about how they had, they were expending a lot of money renting forest fires, but the sequoias were seemed to be thinning out and dying. You know, not enough right. sequoias. And one time, uh, I forgot I forgot when, but one time back back in recent history they lost control of one of the fires and it burned mm -hmm. and it burned all the underbrush oh, yeah. and all, all of a sudden they had thousands of little sequoia trees coming exactly. up it was because fire was part of the life cycle right that's exactly and, right yes yeah and uh, we were interfering but well, uh, talking about prayer I, I went to a course once on how to write uh, how to write grants Okay, and this struck me because the way you write a grant is to look at a job that the person that's going to uh, give the grant is supposed to do right. and explain to them how you're going to do their job. Right. Okay. Right. Prayer is kind of the same way. Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta see you gotta you gotta be able to discern what God wants in this situation and pray for that to happen. Right. And, and that's when prayers get answered. Exactly. Yes, yes. It's not a service card. Or, right. Or just, you know, you said. He's not a butler. Yeah, right. <laughs> or a drive through Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So, Very good. And that's what, kind of what you're saying here. Yeah. Okay, verse 19. Pray to the Lord your God for us, or we will die, they all said to Samuel. For now... We have added to our sins by asking for a king. Okay, we're in trouble, but now we're drowning in all this rain. Yeah. And are they not, when you stop and think about it, this is why I'm just here to tell you, the Bible just repeats itself, repeats itself, so that we will finally get an understanding. Yeah. Is this not Pharaoh? Pharaoh, you know, a plague comes, and he said, okay, I'll let you go. Uh, the plague is, you know, taken away. No, I don't think it will. Yeah. So that's what you're seeing here. You know, again, the people are acting just like Pharaoh, but yeah. they're not building a meaningful relationship with God. Yeah. Wow. It's great. Love it. So <clears throat> Samuel says, Don't be afraid. You've certainly done wrong. But make sure now that you worship the Lord with all your heart and don't turn your back on him. It'll be okay as long as you keep God in the proper place in your yeah. life. Yeah, this is a major truth. Even though it may sound simple, but it's never too late for anybody. Right. It's never too late for anybody. Right. But you've got to be serious. 
when it's when you are going to, you know, you play the game of 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 turning back, going back, turning back, going back. Yeah, it's going to catch up. And, with and you. I think this, that's a good thing to remember the uh, keep God in His place because people have come to me over the over the years and said, should I take this new job here or should I stay with the guy? You know, and the answer is right here. As long as you keep God in His place, that's, right. that's exactly right. Take, take take the best deal. You yeah. know, what I mean, yeah. As long as you keep God in His proper place, right. He'll take care of it. That's so. exactly right. So. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, we get labeled sometimes as just being, you know, all religious people. Yeah. We're not. God really makes a difference yeah. in your life. Yes, he does. So you can plan with him or you can plan without him. I'm just telling you, planning without him, it's not going to be as good as planning with him. Yeah. You can just mark it. I'm telling you, it's the truth, it's the truth, it's the truth. Yeah. And, you know, I often think, because we all think as we get older, you know, we're not going to be here forever. No, so why not. do I really want to leave? I just really want to leave with, I'm telling you, serve the Lord. Yeah. Serve the Lord. Don't. Don't go down that road of not serving him. But they listen to me sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it goes. Yeah. You right. can only say what you can say. Yeah, that's true. Don't go back worshiping the worthless idols that cannot help or rescue you. They are totally useless. Boy, there's some great truths yeah. coming through this story here. Yeah. Man. The Lord will not abandon his people because that would dishonor his great name. Now that goes back yeah. to Moses. <laughs> yeah. For it has pleased the Lord to make you his very own people. Yeah, and that's, uh, I think that, go, that goes to uh, uh, glorifying God, and that, it, and, and that is that, uh, and, and it goes to that last point about prayer, is you have to be able, you have to discern what's, what God's perspective is. That's what's called wisdom. Right. God's perspective is, and then ask for Him to apply that to your situation. Right. Uh, right. And um, and that that requires being familiar with God. That requires praying and and seeking the will of God. Right. Uh, and I don't mean asking for things. I mean seeking the will of God so you can discern how to pray. Right. If you know what I'm saying. Right. So. Oh, that's good. Uh, Okay, verse 23 says, As for me, I will certainly not sin against the Lord by ending my prayers for you, and I will continue to teach you what is good and right. I'm going to keep being your prophet. That's a good lesson for me and you, yeah. <laughs> and any minister to remember. Yeah. You know, even when they're rejected, just stay consistent yeah. and, tell them, and loving and telling the truth. Yeah. Wow, that's good. I, I'm going to tell you something when we get to the end here. But be sure to fear the Lord and faithfully serve him. Think of all the wonderful things that he has done for you. But if you continue to sin, you and your king will be swept away. away. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you noticed it today, but I have noticed it. There are some times when we do this Bible study and you and I are just, we just love, we just love the word and we love seeing certain angles of it. Yeah. But today, I, we were more pastoral in our discussion. Yeah, I think not, we were. Not just unlocking the deep secrets of the word, of just sharing two pastors' hearts yeah. about what it means to watch over the people of God. Yeah. And I think that was neat. Yeah, it was. I, I really did. And uh, and that, you know, that's, you usually would come to a chapter like that and you just kind of, Read it through quickly because you know it's it's just it's just a prayer or recounting what's already happened. No, there were some yeah. great little nuggets of just simple truth that that will build people up if you let it. Yeah, and stuff. And it reminds us, like you said, our people are not perfect. We're not perfect, but. but there is one perfect. Yeah, one of the, one of the problems, and, and and we're running out of time. But one, one of the one of the problems we have as pastors talking about that is uh, monkey management. Right. Yeah. Are you familiar with that perspective? <laughs> I'm not sure. Jumping from here, jumping to there. Or well, no, no. That? It's called monkey management because people come to you for counseling, and what they really want to do is take the monkey off their back and put right. it on your back. That's true. Yes. And you've got to learn the art of managing monkeys. Leave your problem on your back, 
but advise and right. show you, yes. you know and lead right. Right. but don't let them put their monkey on your back that's right because it'll weigh you down that's right and, and that, that's a hard lesson to learn as a counselor and as a pastor because you want to accept responsibility for all the problems right. Right. and you can't do that it'll it'll kill you mm-hmm. you sure can that's exactly right and it takes it takes a while to, to understand that yeah yeah that's good so, well, that's been a great day. Yeah, it has. It's been real good. I enjoyed it very much. Great. That was a wonderful chapter. Yeah. Okay, so we'll pick up with chapter 13. 13. We're next gonna, week. We're going to go battle the Philistines. Again? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. This is, this is the war we've been waiting for. We'll learn something. Yeah. Uh, you pray us out in. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for your many blessings and for the opportunity we have to come to you in prayer. Help us to discern your will and to know how to pray so that we can, in fact, effectively lead and and uh, and help the people of God that are in, entrusted to our care. We thank you so much for all that you do for us, and we ask that you be with us this week and uh, just Uh, touch the people of God Father in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen okay we'll see you next week see you next week